Hello, algebra students. This one's for you advanced students because you might not see these particular skills combined on the GED math test. You will see both of them, but you might not see them combined. I would be surprised. However, good practice for you guys. We're supposed to have this kind of reasoning and it's good practice of two skills, like I said, that you will see even if they're not necessarily together. So a rectangle has a width of 4x minus 3 units and a length of 2x minus 7 or 2x plus 7 units. And you say, well, can they do that? They didn't really give me numbers, Kate. Yeah, they can they can give you an algebraic expression to represent the width and the length. And I'm just gonna label my rectangle like I usually would. Okay. So width of 4x minus 3 units, length of 2x plus 7 units. And now let's see what they're asking us to do. First of all, find its area. Now a lot of you, especially if you're my advanced students, you already know to find the area of a rectangle, just multiply together the two dimensions. Um, if you know that, great, so do I. But if you don't, just hit up the formula sheet and it will tell you exactly that in the language of algebra. It'll say to find the area of a rectangle, multiply together the length and the width. And that is all we're going to do here. All right, now the tricky thing of course though is that my length and my width are algebraic expressions. So you're gonna have to know how to multiply algebraic expressions. So I said my length was 2x plus seven. So I'm gonna have 2x plus seven. Now I wanna take that entire length, not just part of it, not just the seven, but the entire thing. So I'm gonna use parentheses and multiply with the entire width. And again, the entire width, it has two terms. I'm gonna to need to use parentheses again for x minus three. And now, as always in algebra, unless you're told otherwise, let's go ahead and make sure our final answer is simplified. So 2x times 4x would be 8x squared. 2x times negative 3 would be negative 6x. Positive 7 times 4x would be positive 28x. And positive 7 times negative 3 would be negative 21. See a little more simplifying I can do? There's some like terms. I can combine some x terms. Let's go ahead and do that. There's no other x squared terms that'll just drop. I can do it in my calculator if I need to, but negative 6 plus 28 is positive 22. I was adding and subtracting x's, so it'll be positive 22x. And there's no other constant term or plain old number, so I just drop it. And so this is my area, 8x squared plus 22x minus 21. And you might say, well, okay, that's super duper ugly. Shouldn't I try to make it simpler? And well, you can't. You can't because we don't currently know what x is. There's no other information. So the best I can do is say this is the area in some square units. And again, I mean like this thing is covered in squares. That's what area means. So I'll just say in some kind of square units. Bum. There you go. That is the answer to A. All right, oh, let's clear all that and look at B. All right, so B says find the perimeter. Now, again, a lot of students know that if you wanna find the perimeter, you just go ahead and add up all the sides. And that's probably the simplest way to do this. You can also bust out the formula, which tells you that to find the perimeter of a rectangle, you need two lengths. Well, that should make sense. Length and a length plus two widths. And again, that should make sense. A width and a width. But I think I'm just going to do it the straightforward way where I go all the way around a shape. All right. So to find its perimeter, I'll start with this width here, 4x minus 3. And to that, I'm going to add the length 2x plus 7. But remember not to stop there. You have to get all the way around the rectangle. So now this side, how long is it? You say, I don't know. Well, yes, you do. Even though it's an ugly number, we know that opposite sides of a rectangle are equivalent. So basically, if you know one side, then you know the side across from it as well. That will also be 4x minus 3. So I'm going to add that in, plus 4x minus 3. And you might notice I'm not using parentheses, and that's because I'm kind of lazy. I mean, I could put them in. But I do happen to know that when you're adding polynomials, right, the parentheses don't make a difference. So I'm just kind of being lazy right from the start and not putting them in because I don't want to have to drop them later. 
But I've got one more side to add in. Uh, we have to get over here. And once again, if I look at the side across from it, I can see that that one will also measure 2x plus 7. So plus 2x plus 7. And now, once again, that is the perimeter. This is a correct answer, but it sure isn't a simplified answer. So let's simplify. Let's look for like terms. This one's messy, so I'm going to pick up a different color. So first of all, I have an x term. Are there any other x terms? Well, yes, there are. Plus 2x plus 4x plus 2x. All right, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 x's. And now let's go ahead and look at our constant terms, our plain old numbers. So negative 3, remember to keep the sign in front, plus 7, minus 3, plus 7. And you can put it into your calculator if you need to, but what you're going to get is a positive 8. And so I will write plus 8. So what is the perimeter of this rectangle? Well, as far as we're concerned, and we're still in letter B, that's it. It's 12x plus 8, plain old regular units. We learned perimeter was measured in linear units, so I'm not going to write square units is basically all I'm saying. But the important part here is that you see that simplified expression, 12x plus 8. Now, Maybe I should have said we were going to review three GED topics because it's not only um, perimeter and area of a rectangle as well as adding and multiplying algebraic expressions that we're looking at here or, or binomials. We're also going to look at solving equations. So maybe I should have said we're going to review five. That'd be... That's pretty impressive, but maybe you would have been scared and turned off the video. I don't know. So I'm just going to write down again what we had said B was because we're going to need it for C. Look at what C says. If the perimeter equals 26 inches, solve for X. Now, now we have information in order to be able to solve. And why is that? Because we just got an equation. Look what it says. If the perimeter equals 26. That's a that's an equation. Perimeter equals 26. And they could didn't even have to say equals. They could have just said if the perimeter is 26 inches. And why is that an equation? You say, Kate, that's a word, not an equation. Well, look, we already know its perimeter. Its perimeter is this. So instead of calling it perimeter, let's call it that algebraic expression. 12x plus 8 equals 26. And now look, that's not challenging. That's a two-step equation. We can do that. Let's work to get x alone. So first, I will get rid of anything adding or subtracting. Take 8 from both sides. And now notice I'm not using my rules of simplifying anymore. Now I'm solving. I've got 12x left, and that's going to be equivalent to, what is that, 18? 18. And now x is not alone. X is being multiplied by 12, so I'll do the opposite. I'll divide by 12 to get rid of it. And can I do that? Yes, you can do that to an equation because as long as you keep the both sides equal, you're safe. So 12 uh, multiplying and 12 dividing cancel. I have X alone. And then 18 over 12. Now you can do this two ways in your calculator simplifying it. You can use the regular divide by button. If you do, you'll get 1.5. Or you can input it as a fraction, 18 over 12, press enter, and it'll give you the reduced fraction, which is 3 halves. Either one could happen on the GED. Neither one is better than the other. Um, if either they'll accept both, if it's a fill in the blank, or if it is multiple choice, then only one of them would be in the answer because they're not trying to make you decide which one's a better answer, neither one is. So either one of these are acceptable. There you go, wow, okay, so we just reviewed five skills, really. Area of a rectangle, perimeter of a rectangle, multiplying binomials, adding um, and subtracting, so combining like terms, and then solving equations. Oh no, you know what? Let's throw writing equations in there too. Boom, six GED skills. No wonder we're the advanced students ninjas. All right, guys, go drink your tea. You're amazing. So, so proud of you.